Greetings. This is Pastor Gary Montgomery, host of the Stone Builders Hour. I have a degenerative spine and have lived with constant pain for over five years. I tried it all surgeries, opioids, natural pain medication, and still no relief until I found Dr. Ryan Knight of Knight Family Chiropractic. Dr. Knight and his team reviewed my medical records and developed a personal therapy and rehabilitation plan, and I'm now on my way to pain reduction. You know, he can help you too. Just call Knight Family Chiropractic at 580-448-4412 for a free exam in Durant, Oklahoma, and mention Pastor Gary referred you. Remember his motto, all you need is love and adjustments. Call 580-448-4412. Greeting friends and neighbors. Pastor Gary Montgomery here inviting you to become a Stone Builder donor. Your support will allow the Stone Builder Hour to remain on the air. Please join Elder JC and I as we share the good news with you by sharing Bible scriptures and how relevant they are today. You can reach out and touch us by calling 580-634-5896 or stonebhr at gmail.com or donate on our secure site, welivingstones.org. Welcome to the Stone Builder Hour team. Much love and God bless. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of the Stone Builders Hour with your host, Pastor Gary Montgomery, and my lovely wife, Elder JC. But first, I want to give a shout out to all those men and women who are incarcerated in the Big Bend area of Tallahassee, Florida, and here in the Texoma area of Texas in southern Oklahoma. All right. Cowboy country. Yes, indeed. We're reaching uh, lots of folks, and uh, we just want to know that God loves you and has not forgotten about you, and the best is yet to come. Amen, amen. Welcome, family and podcast radio audience. We are here today to express the words of the Lord. We love the Holy Word. Amen. We believe in the Holy Word, and there's nothing you can tell us that will change our minds. Well, you know, last well, the last four weeks, yes. we've been talking about the Ten Commandments, yep. and we just ask that you follow them because God is looking for you to follow them for all eternity. If you read you want to be with him. If you read the newspaper. <laughs> it's crazy uh, out here. There's not even one that's not broken right now of the mm. contempt commandments. Yes, it is. And remember, God is always moving throughout the earth looking for what? Just that one. So, Lord, look for me because I'm trying to keep those commandments. Amen. Well, coming up, we want to start uh, with the book of Psalms. Amen. Uh, this was my beginning introduction to the Bible. Um, I wanted to learn, um, I grew up as a Catholic, um, wanted to learn more about the Bible because we didn't use our Bibles. We used a catechism there was a, book. There was a religious book that the Catholics, Catholics followed. And, does that and go it back was, to Constantine too? Or I'm the Pope sure it or? does. <laughs> I'm sure it does because it was our guide. In fact, uh, one of the nuns when I was growing up in high school told me that I didn't need to look at the Bible because I had my catechism and it had everything I need. And I told her, well, wait a minute. If the catechism is based on the Bible, why wouldn't I want to read my Bible? Right. Of course, I got sent on a class. That was one of the few times I was in support. Oh, you're revolutionary <laughs> during that time, huh? True, true, true. <laughs> but if Psalms was the book that I started reading to learn how to really start getting into my word. Well, I tell you, uh, the book of Psalms is one of the greatest collections of songs 
prayers and poetry. Mm. You know, the book of Psalms, it expresses the deepest passion of humanity. And we can hear the psalmist's desperate cry uh, in the midst of despair because, oh boy, David and those folks during that time, he went through they some went stuff. They went through some real <laughs> they went stuff. Some, they was like some real uh, life uh, uh, life experiences going on. But also, it has his ecstatic praise of the Almighty God. And we can hear King David and also Solomon. They can pour out their souls in confession, but also bubbling over with joy. You know, Psalms lead us through the valleys and peak of human experiences, and we are experiencing valleys and peaks Mm. for sure right now, especially what's happening down in that southern part of the border with folks coming over or or people killing each other, mass shootings, abortion, all kind of things that, oh boy, (laughs) the human experience for sure. But by the end... We all praise our living God and also the creator uh, through the book of Psalms. Well, you know, we all talk about who wrote Psalms, and many of us do believe that King David was responsible. But other authors were Moses, Hmm. Aesop, Heman, the sons of Korah, Solomon, Ethan, and Jaduthan. Many are from unnamed sources. So, when we look at these verses, most of that are attributed attributed to King David. Uh, where's That's my a coffee? Tight tight. Here, get a cup of coffee. Because <laughs> he was known as the sweet psalmist of Israel. And that's from Second Samuel 23, 1. And remember, God said that David was a man after his own heart. Mm-hmm. Part of the Psalms were originally composed by him, but there were other editors to aid in the interpretations of the Psalms. And note that the Psalms weren't written all in that time period. Um, It went from the beginning of the book till after a lot of times through their captures and things of that nature because you know some of those verses do cry out to God for help so I'm sure that was they was in a lot of trouble during that time yep, yep. and these are called superscriptions um, they were not part of the Psalms but they were originally composed to interpret these poems because it was interesting I was reading and they were saying that the poems aren't like you know roses are red violets are blue kind of poem they're poems that bring in ideas and emotions so they had to try to make them sound that that's what their poems were to try to bring in those additional verses so that people would understand what the emotional state of those people were the hysterical books of the Bible speak of David's considerable accomplishments as a musician, mm-hmm. singer, and composer of poems. So just imagine, he was like the, uh, give me some of some uh, singers today that are uh, gospel singers. Um uh, Boy, well, my Donnie job? McClurkin, those guys. Yeah. So he was the, that time period. He was like that. So you can see this in First Samuel sixteen nineteen through twenty three, eighteen ten, and Second Samuel's one seventeen through twenty seven. Also, First Chronicles twenty nine ten through fifteen. Moreover, David's psalms are recorded in Second Samuel's twenty two one again one seventeen through twenty seven. But he goes on to, I mean, he is prolific. He is throughout all of the various Psalms. He was in Psalm 18. But then there's a medley of those Psalms that were attributed to Aesop. And I'm not going to read all the scriptures, but like Psalm 106, 147, 48. And you know that uh, what is the longest book in the Bible? Anyone know that? Mm, Mm -hmm. Tick tock, tick tock. tock. It's Psalm 119. I was going to say that, but I was waiting for uh, (laughs) someone to call in (laughs) and say, hey, I know the answer. And you can call in at 580-634-5896. All right. There you go. He he got it right. (laughs) (laughs) So... 
it is well documented that, that King David was responsible for a lot of the songs. But he's not the only composer, and I gave you some of those. His son Solomon was part of that, uh, Aesop. Uh, a lot of them were writing these psalms as well as Proverbs. Mm-hmm. So when you look at that, there uh, this and even some were written by Moses, which was five centuries before even David got here. So the when I look at Psalms, I see that as a historical event that went from the beginning to the current times of David, and then those time periods that we live right now. So as we look at these, um, there are others too, like Ezra, uh, and then during his time, the book of Psalms that we know it were compiled today as we see it in our Bible. But it's just interesting that the authors, there's uh, quite a few authors outside of David. And like I said, they were writing these as a, a form of prose where they brought in emotions to com- to let people know how really how to not only just to express their uh, connection to God, but just to cry out. Yeah, because one, there was a priestly family, uh, the sons of Korah, that continued to write the Psalms for centuries, yes. you know, and uh, women also wrote Psalms such as Deborah, uh, just the uh, Judgment uh, 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 5, and Hannah, uh, when you see uh, 1 Samuel's 2, they wrote Psalms. You know, the composers of many of the Psalms, they are and have remained anonymous, and some of these anonymous psalms may be attributed to David, but certainly not all of them. And, and psalms were still being written during the times of Ezra. And it was Ezra's times that the book of Psalms as well, how we know it. And uh, it's just like the Psalm 6. Um, it, it starts off like to the chief musician mm. on uh, Negathoth upon Shemeth. My pronunciation is off. I need a cup of coffee. And it's a, it's a Psalms attributed to David. And he says, O Lord, rebuke me not thy anger, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. But what I like is this one. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are vexed. My soul is also sore vexed. But thou, O Lord, how long? And that's when some of those low times where you're just crying out uh, your heart that, man, I'm tired of getting beat up. I'm I'm weary with my groaning. I'm tired. He said, I'm weary my groaning. And all night, uh, make I my bed to swim and I water my couch with my tears. I am so low that I'm just pouring out myself. I'm crying. I'm sweating. My, My couch and my clothes are all soaking wet. That's a low period. Yes, it is. And when you talked about the subheadings and a lot of that, when we talked about David being a musician, a lot of those were set to appropriate tunes or melodies um, to which part of the choir is leading. So some of these were praise and worship songs. And remember I said that there was a, uh, they weren't true poetries or true prose. They were known, uh, they were marked by parallelism or rhyming of thoughts, and these were couplets that state synonymous thoughts in each line. So the second line states the negative of the preceding line. They were also constructive in that they had revealing justifications of the first line. So there were always, and they always worked, um, they involved three lines so that they could actually get this parallelism going throughout the whole prose. Um, one of the things I'm trying to look at, Pastor, we were going to talk about the structure, whether we should take our break now or well, let's afterwards. Talk, well, let's just go. Let's, let's just go with it, uh, because uh, the Pentateuch. Um, it's just like the Psalms. It's just like the Pentateuch. It's like five books of Moses, and you got the Book of Psalms. It's arranged in five sections, which is Book One, Psalms one through forty-one. 
Book two, Psalms 42 through 72. Book three, Psalms 40, 73 to 89. Uh, book four, which is Psalms 90 to 106. And book five, which is 107 to 150. Each of these books, they conclude with a, dic- a dicology and affirmation of praise to the Almighty found in the last verse of two of the concluding Psalms. Does that make sense to y'all? In the case of book five, the entire last Psalms, 150, is concluding the doxology. And the reason for this arrangement of the book of Psalms, it's not clear. We don't know. Most likely it has something to do with the use of Psalms in the praise of God in the temple of worship. Praise God. Or the author finished and the next guy didn't know where to pick up at. <laughs> or they didn't pay their royalties. Huh? <laughs> well, <how laughs> As true. you singers today, you got to pay that royalty on the praise and worship songs. Well, I am looking to see one of the things that you talked about is the structure. But remember, when David did much of his music, it was always to calm the king. Hmm. So a lot of these songs and psalms came out of those uh, particular situations. Um, What we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break and then when we come back we're going to talk about some of the categories of the psalms Um, we're also going to talk about the characteristics and if we get to it at the end we'll talk about what does this mean of christ in the scriptures how does this all relate to show that this ultimately is going to be christ coming in his return we'll be right back As a creative businesswoman, I grew up in the church. As I have gone through many challenges, God was the most important thing to me. Pastor Gary and Elder JC's ministry has been a blessing to me. You can receive a blessing too by listening to them on the Stone Builders Hour. I listen on Wave 94.1 FM every Thursday at 5 p.m. You can also get the good news on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and SoundCloud, or your favorite podcasts. Check them out. Our family values are under attack. As a husband and father, family is very important to me. I can get the word by listening to the Stone Builders Hour on my favorite podcast, I Heart Radio. You can check them out on other podcasts like Spotify and SoundCloud. As a man of faith, the word is very important to me. And I can get the truth from Pastor Gary and Elder J.C. Montgomery. Check them out on the Stone Builders Hour. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Stone Builders Hour with your host, Pastor Gary Montgomery, my lovely wife, Elder JC. And we are talking about the Psalms, the Mm. book of Psalms. And and we had talked about how uh, the book of Psalms covers a, a very low point in your life, but also can give you a very high point. And that's why I just love Psalms 23, especially the one that says, He restores my soul Mm. and lead me in the paths of righteousness for His His name's sake. sake. Amen. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, though I walk out into the street, uh, when I see different things in the street, uh, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So no weapon formed against me can prosper. And that's why the books of Psalms, you know, when you keep that close to your heart, uh, books one and two is composed primary of David's Psalms. And book three includes the Psalms of Asap. Or Aesop. Mm-hmm. A, is that A silent or not? <laughs> and, and then um, uh, the Korah um, in books four and five include uh, 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 anonymous psalms along with a few by David and others. They kind of just put them all together there. Well, just but remember uh, um, Aesop probably did Psalms 73 to 83. And Korah did Psalms 84 through 88. And remember, we said the Psalms expand centuries, expands a lifetime from Moses to that current day 
And then we're going to talk a little bit about it projects Christ into those Psalms as well. You know, I want to say that it just dropped in my spirit, you know, when you said the book of Aesop, we did a story on Aesop last year and Aesop during Black History Month, Aesop is black. Mm-hmm. You know, as a matter of fact, all the people we're talking about, <laughs> they, they are of a brown tone people uh, from that era of the world and uh, in that time period. Um, you know, I just wanted to, uh, that wasn't, that was very important to include because we are in the Bible. Yes, we are from the very beginning. Yes. Just remember, black contains all the colors. It's genetic. Mm. Now we're going to talk about the categories of the Psalms. I'm not going to get right. into that. That's another rabbit trail. Well, surely, oh, goodness and mercy <laughs> shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen, amen. <laughs> Many of the Psalms can be identified as certain types by their themes. And mm. remember, David did a lot of music, and that music was sung in their temple. Like after they after he killed Goliath. Yes. And so, it was all partying. Yes. So all of those have meaning specifically especially the ones that were written by david well all of them really Mm -hmm. the rural psalms emphasize god as king often using the words the lord reigns and you know that what's that song there is a song that reigns reigns, right from heaven above he rules with power and love my god is an awesome god those songs (laughs) were the songs that they sang to give God his homage. And that's not an, a man king. Mm. That's the God king. These uh, Psalms spoke of his, of his rule as creator, as savior. That's the projection of Christ, of Israel. And as the coming one, the rural Psalms often point forward to the coming rule of the savior king, the Lord Jesus. So you know mm-hmm. he's on his way back. If they... Just remember now, this is way back when they were singing that he was on their way back. Mm. The Psalms of Zion focused on Jerusalem using its endearing name Zion. These Psalms rapidize on the city as God's choice for the sight of his holy mm. word. I mean, we, we think that God is is playing at this that he's not really meaning what he said but he said he is going to be coming back to rule in jerusalem i'm looking forward to that no more pain no more crime no more anything that we would be sufficient in every one of our needs and trust me I'm working to get there because I don't want to be there at the end looking over and looking at what torture and torment people are experiencing because we wouldn't obey the Lord. It's at the end time yes. when everyone is called. Uh, the Almighty is going to have us line up and go look over the cliff and look down and see all the people who are uh, grinding and mashing of their teeth mm-hmm. and crying for, uh, it's in Revelations, and just crying out. And we will be dropped down and pray, say, thank you, Lord. Yep. And not only thank you, so right now, audience, we you need to go through those penitential psalms, those f- uh, poems that we confess our sins to the Lord, mm. ask for and receive his forgiveness, mm-hmm. and then praise him because we renewed our relationship through God who, ge- who forgives us. Yeah. I mean, I'm serious. This is serious business. This life, as I keep telling you, is only temporal. We talking about everlasting, y'all. Eternity. Then there's the wisdom psalms. Focus on some of the same issues that are found in the book of Proverbs. I think we better uh, follow with Proverbs on this one. These psalms are in contrast between the righteous and the wicked. Oh, boy, we need to. Mm. <laughs> every day you look at the newspaper, there's it's getting some wickedness worse worse. going on with uh, the trans situation, with sports, you know. And with, then the oh, crime. The feminist that, with the, feminist? Well, I mean, you have women, biological women, who are competing, uh, and now you have a non 
biological female now competing. And uh, I would never buy another Sports Illustrated uh, again because they have, I understand this is the second year in a row where they have a trans. As the woman as of a, the year. <laughs> uh, well, as a swimsuit model. Uh, well. Along with... Uh, 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 the old woman who's 81 years old, Martha Stewart, Stewart right up there in the bay. Who wants to see my, <laughs> you know what? This world is so I got to look at 81 year old grandma, Martha Stewart uh, in Sports Illustrated swimsuit model. And then there's a man who's impersonating a woman who. Oh God, help us. <laughs> no, we asked for some wisdom, Lord, because that's me, a group of Psalms too. He said that thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. enemies yes. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over with the Holy Spirit to protect us from all oh, the wows of the evil one that's going on. And Lord, I just pray that is. you take the scales off of people's eyes and the plugs out their ears. So that they can see the truth. And that's why Psalms will lead you in that direction. Yes, it will. You got me fired up right now. <laughs> because you need to be fired up. Mm. This is serious business. You're talking about looking at things. I feel like uh, what's Rip Friend Wrinkle. Mm-hmm. I went to sleep and woke up and the world is topsy-turvy, <laughs> yeah. upside down. What's good is evil and what evil is good. Now I can say a man is a woman and a woman is a man. Or I can say I'm non-binary. I'm nothing. I mm, mm. what is going on? So we need to get some wisdom, Lord. So Isn't binary one two? Is zero, zero one <laughs> zero one. So you want so you so the people are calling themselves non-binary. You don't rate. You're a zero. No, you no non-binary means you're not a zero or one. But let me go. <laughs> We're right, not okay. getting on that. Oh Lord, help the us. The wisdom psalms present a sharp contrast and this is what you're talking about between the righteous and the wicked it addresses god's blessing and cursing and y'all keep forgetting about that cursing and often often focus on righteous living one of the uh, category of psalms is the torah psalms these are poems that focus on the beauty truth and sufficiency of the law of god Two other categories that are there are the Creator Psalms and the History Psalms. Pastor, you want to take over that in Creation Psalms? What do you got? Well, in the Creation Psalms, that poet calls for the believers to praise the Almighty as the creator of the universe and the savior of his people, which is the Israelites. Yes. This is, this is his favorite people. In the history Psalms, that poet recounts the history of Israel and asks for a renewed commitment to the Almighty, even in the face of history of rebellion. And some so, and, and most troubling psalms are those that contain prayers asking the Almighty to curse the wicked. I don't think we need to ask him to do anything because he sees all anyway. Yes, he does. So, and not uh, only that. Uh, he said he would fight your battles. Yes. All you got to do is call yes. on to fight your battles. Yes. I got a lot of battles right now, Lord. I need you. How many? <laughs> I, I just send them up to you. You already know. Let it be a sweet aroma to you, Lord. Yes. Because we need you. We need you, Lord, we need you. Okay, I'm just, oh, God. But you know what? The, 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 the Psalms are sometimes thought to conflict with the sentiment of the gospel. But in fact, they accurately reflect the Almighty's abhorrence of evil. He hates evil. Yes, I believe he does. He and, hates it. and one of the things that I love about Psalms is that to me it was a personal inspiration. Just like you said, you were in situations and I would always reflect back to Psalms. People said to read the entire Bible. You could go through the Psalms and stay in the Psalms for years because of not only the inspiration, but the spiritual strength. You know, sometimes in the course of dealing with ad, the adversities of life, and you know if you live in, you have adversities, 
people are often frustrated by not being able to express their emotional pain or mental anguish. I think that's what a lot of times is going on with these people just shooting people. And some guy just recently rode his car through the sidewalk and, and just red. bottled through people over. Get killed. a bus stop. Yes. I mean, so what prompted them to do that if if they would have been reading their psalms would they have been able to overcome that because we need a release from our frustrations you see it in how people are acting road rage and the like sometimes we are so tied into our complaints that we need to do humble confessions we need desperate pleas that's what david said lord look upon me mm. you're frail i'm weak I need your assistance. So he is there to comfort the lonely, strengthen the weary, bind the brokenhearted, mm. and turn the eyes of the downcast up to their creator. That's why I always says, I look to the hills from whence cometh my help, and my help comes from the Lord. So that will help you get your hope back. Amen. Your faith renewed, and life again becomes bearable. Praise God. That's why Psalms 25, uh, 2 says, O God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed and let not my enemies triumph over me. So when we go out of our doors every day, we are confronted in the world as like topsy-turvy right now. And, 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 and one thing is that I know that we need to talk about uh, coming up is that, that Finn now. Where come July, <clears throat> there's going to be a digital currency that will be introduced. And <clears throat> so, yeah, let none of thee wait on thee because, Lord, we need you right now because yeah. we are heading in some perilous times right now where cash is going to be decreased in our economy. I and it's all going to be on cash on me. I don't know. It's, <laughs> it's going to be on digits and widgets. <laughs> no, digits meaning none. Uh, but let credits me just and look debits. At, yeah, yeah, look. The, the credits and debits. One last thing is that the final group of these Psalms is clustered at the end of the book. And these are the Halal Psalms. Mm. And you know, like hallelujah, praise these psalms praise God for his character and saving works. And Pastor, we are at the end of this. I think we're going to have to come back and talk about characteristics and how crises are in these psalms, the projection for the end, because I think there is so much more. And I'd like to see us lead into Proverbs, because the psalms and Proverbs are very closely related. Any ending words? You remember... O oh Lord, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindnesses, for they have been never of old. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions, according to thy mercy. Remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O oh Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore will he teach sinners in the way. Sinners, get out of my way. Amen. Right now, in the mighty name of Yeshua, the Lord, we just thank you and just ask that you bless each and every one that this uh, program reaches. And we just ask that you cover us, dear Lord, as we reveal the truth, because the truth shall set you free. But then you have folks who get angry at you. But that's why we have a shield of protection around us. All and that right. goes to you also. Yes, it does. Peace out. Yes. Next week.